Just tell us a little bit more about the type of collaboration uh, between these three entities. Well, Samantha, firstly, I think as, as you're aware, we, the manufacturing sector uh, circle consists of about 40 South African, major, major South African manufacturing companies who really are going through very tough times. And uh, recently, Leslie Sadebi <coughs> has been appointed the CEO of Proudly South African, and I think we're seeing a rebirth of Proudly South African. And there is a natural uh, alignment between Proudly South African and buy South African products and the manufacturing circle to encourage South Africans to, to buy South African products. And, and thirdly, um, we are very pleased that, uh, that, that NUMSA have also joined us in this campaign. We have a lot of areas where we have uh, common interest, and I think this tripartite um, uh, alliance will, will, will give us the boost that we need. I know that Irvin Jim, the General Secretary of NUMSA, has been key in driving this collaboration. The significance of the union um, in this collaboration is important given the fact that the manufacturing circle and the manufacturing sector as a whole is important for job creation. Uh, wh what type of um, multiplier of effect in terms of manufacturing, uh, the manufacturing circle, circle have you identified in terms of job creation? Yes, we have. You know, we've done a study on this, and it is it is uh, exceptional when you when you look at the benefit it'll bring to the economy. It'll it'll create the demand we need, and I think what we want to do is encourage all South African companies to support uh, the government's initiative on preferential procurement, and indeed the unions themselves will uh, will ask their members and the companies that they they represent to support this. So I think it is a very very important initiative, and hopefully we can get this momentum. Uh, continued, riding on the back of the government's uh, preferential procurement program. Now the cost of doing business in South Africa is becoming increasingly prohibitive and it's become a key concern for manufacturers. One of the reasons yes. high wage demands, now that you've got this type of collaboration and dialogue going with NUMSA, are you going to be addressing this with the union? Yes, sure. I, I think what is needed, uh, business and, and unions need to dialogue a lot more. And we need to find common ground on which we agree and then obviously debate which we don't. I think we've had too, ma too much standoff, too, too much uh, um, a division between the two. And we've both been shouting from the terraces except, uh, instead of getting on the playing field and, and engaging with each other. There are differences, particularly on wages. But uh, you mentioned costs. You know, we've got other costs where we have common... Uh, common ground to, um, to lobby uh, Eskom, for instance, the ports, uh, Transnet, uh, the councils, etc., where we want to work with the, uh, the government to, to bring costs down in this, in this arena. A key area of concern, and another one, is the lack of semi-skilled workers and, of course, skilled Indeed. workers in South Africa. I know that the importation of skills is one of the areas that you believe could address this uh, situation in the short term in order to uh, transfer skills. Does government recognize this and also the role that uh, onerous immigration laws play in this? Well, I agree. I'm not sure government realizes it uh, yet, but you know, on every platform we're on, we, we talk about it, we engage with, uh, with the economic cluster ministers on, on this issue, and, and I still believe this is the key issue for us to, um, to get South Africa moving, because of the, we should take advantage of the unemployment in the United States and Europe and bring these skills to South Africa. It's certainly not going to increase unemployment, it's going to reduce it, and we have this transfer of skills that you've mentioned is so important for this economy. So we'll keep driving this. And uh, I know we haven't yet got the support of the unions on this one, but, but hopefully we'll, we'll move closer and, and get it too nodding on this very important aspect. We seem to be working through the, the challenges that the manufacturing sector faces. Another one is illegal imports. Uh, the economist yes. Raj Abedin has said that government has shown more political will to impose import duties. What are you seeing from your end? And do you feel that uh, this type of will is being translated into the, nece into the necessary action? Look, it's a big political um, issue, and, and, and I agree with you. I, I believe there is some movement. We're, we're, me we're meeting and engaging with ITAC. We're meeting and engaging with DTI's uh, trade policy people. And, and I think they do appreciate that we've got to stop these unfair imports um, from Asian countries. You can see what it's done to the United States. You know, the, the chief cause of their unemployment at the moment is deindustrialization. South Africa can't afford to have this. And I think this jobs issue is our rallying call to, to get the DTI and the trade policy people to, un to understand that this is a major cause of unemployment in this country.